I do not like treble boosters. I absolutely love treble boosters. And in a little over an hour's time, so will you, and so will you. Welcome to that pedal show down here. Mick here. Hello. Um, oh my word. Goodness me. Uh, <laughs> all will be revealed shortly. What are we doing today then, Dan? We're looking at some treble boosters. Yeah. The uh, we always say this every time we talk about treble boosters. Very unfortunately named thing, isn't it? Yeah. Even yeah. though that's what it does. It does, but it does a lot more than that. And there's also a few more ways that you can use it than. You think? Yeah. But so we want to we want to get you goosing for a indeed for indeed. a treble booster. Um, <laughs> but first, some housekeeping. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. It's the, it's the main way we fund the show. Uh, yep, tees and hats and strings and pedals and picks and you name it. It's there. All kinds of things. No picks. No picks. Well, you know, no, but all those other things. Uh, yeah. And also go to that pedalshop.com if you're in the US and you want to buy pedals, accessories, and even there may be some amps on there now, uh, that pedalshop.com in the US. Perfect. Now, Brilliant. you may be hearing a little bit of background noise mm. because the AC30 is cranked. <laughs> it's in a really beautiful place. Yeah. So let, let, what are we going to cover today? And we've got a whole bunch of treble boosters on the board. Yeah, and th this, these are the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Um, so, some people saw the uh, the Peak Corner, so I've been after one of these for years. Um, and I've been using the Dirty Mac recently. And I just thought, you know what? There's a whole bunch of new treble boostery things out there. Let's throw them on a board, listen to them in the AC30, but also have a look as some other ways that you can use treble boosters, mainly one other way. Yeah, so right from the top, treble boosters gained prominence in the sort of mid-late 60s with people like Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, I guess Brian May after that, very famous for using it. After that, Rory Gallagher, very famous for using a treble booster. Yeah. Because where do they work best? They work best into gain stages that are already clipping, okay? so. We're used to hearing them into amps that are cranked. Yeah. So when we hear the AC30, at the moment it's dimed, okay? And we've got loads of this lovely... It's actually not dimed. It's it's at the point beyond which it no longer is very nice. And where is that point? Two o'clock, obviously. <laughs> two o'clock, two um, o'clock. Let's give you... Let's, so just before you hear the gloriousness of the AC30, into an amp that's overdriving, if you've ever played a treble booster into like a clean Fender amp, which we'll do in a minute, it sounds, it can sound pretty horrific. Yeah. So there may be some other things we can do to improve that. But generally speaking, generally speaking, in to an overdriving amp is where the magic happens. And the reason for that is it's boosting high mids and treble frequencies, and it's usually cutting a great deal of bass, right? Yeah. And because so, well, we can we can use that energy to push those mids and treble frequencies because we're cutting the bass. Um, the bass, if we amplify bass frequencies, that's what takes up the most amount of energy. If we try to put a full range boost into that, it will just get mushy. Mushy, mushy, it, mush, mushy. Mush. Mushy, mushy. But if <laughs> too we... Much. Too much. too much. Mush too much. If we... <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. Much too much. 
But if we if we don't push the bass frequencies, if we just push the mids and the treble, it gives us somewhere to go on the amplifier. A lot of people found that uh, they found the amp in a really sweet spot and it sounds great, but if they're trying to boost with a full range thing, it was really tricky. However, take away the space frequencies and then we it gave the amp somewhere to go. Yeah. And a new voice as well, those those pushed mid frequencies yeah. really help the guitar to stand in the mix. Especially when you're doing a solo and this, you know, the sound guy He's drunk behind the tent. He's, you know, he's he's nowhere <laughs> or she, to be seen. Or they. Nowhere, nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And and you want to be heard. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like, at the end of a solo, and the last note is solo. Oh, okay, he's having a solo. Is that dude playing something <laughs> over there? Um, so a treble booster is a great way to be heard in those moments that you really want to be heard. Yeah. So we'll move on to the AC30 now. And if you're one of those people that's played an AC30 in your life and you've plugged in, you've gone, goodness me, that's trebly. <laughs> like most of us have. It might seem counterintuitive. The last thing you would want to do at that point is boost treble. Yeah. Shall we demonstrate, Dan, why Indeed. you might want to do that? Indeed. So I'll turn the AC30 down. Uh, down. Dan will operate the uh, amplifier exciter. The treble machine. <laughs> and uh, we'll show you what happens. So just the amp then, Dan. Okay. Okay. So. Very, very particular and unique blend of rolled off bass. Yep. Really vocal mid range. Mm -hmm. And those treble frequencies that what you hopefully heard there was their spiky and sharp and actually pretty nice, but spiky and sharp at the beginning. Yeah. As the amp starts to overdrive, what happens is those trebles start overdriving. Yep. And that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Those those half treble frequencies become compress, they limit, and that's a combination of the valve, uh, the valves working really hard, the output stage, the transformer saturating, the speakers being pushed, so those transients, they get softened, yeah. and what you end up with is just this glorious, you know, not, it's loud, let's be honest, there's no no, Dan said, well, why don't we attenuate? Sorry about the background noise, by the way. The amp's from 1961 and it's cranked. Dan says, why don't we attenuate the AC30? And I said, immediate sad face. It's like, nah, because it's just not the same thing. No. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not the same thing when it's attenuated. Yeah, because what we lose if we attenuate is the, the speakers. Yeah. And that is half of it, yeah. right? But of course, the other side of that is we can't be playing for too long today because it's, <laughs> it's brutal. The, 
while the, while we do play louder in here as far as the dB meter is concerned, the particular frequencies that are being pushed by this, by these and that are the ear hole are frequencies. The flipping, it, I know. I have a little twinge in my right ear when it's it's there. when I know it's time to stop. Okay. Right. So uh, anyway, so do you know? Do be careful a bit with um, with all of that. We do have some earplugs on on hand if it gets a bit crazy. Then Dan. Then what shall cometh next? So once we've got the amp to that stage, right? It's on seven, by the way. <laughs> Two o'clock. <laughs> well, I, I, I think of that as seven, but yeah. Okay. So once we've got the amp to that stage, nothing that we put in the input is going to make it louder but what we can do is accentuate those frequencies so thus the treble booster is born um, and we'll hear it we'll hear the ac30 because we've got to hear it with the the cornish booster um, this is the the design that was on brian may's board for years and it's a truly glorious thing <laughs> Turn the AC30 down a bit because the transformer, the ghost transformer notes, the, yeah, and yeah. all of that is was as loud as anything you were playing up top there. It's going to knock it back a touch. Shouldn't get too much less uh, gamey. I'm going to knock it back to halfway. Ah, oh. go on. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me that is a sweeter yeah is a sweeter place because so the amp was too far gone. It was too far gone. Now what's really interesting, right? There is a this idea that the troll booster only works into an amp that is cranked. Now this is a really good demonstration. It's not a cranked amp. It's an amp that's starting to limit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that the the amp is now at a point where it would clean up not just by the volume but almost by the attack. Whereas before it was so limiting yeah. that anything that went into it, I would have had to you know, reduce the volume quite drastically. But if with the volume on full, with the amp like this, I should, I should be able to get clean just by reducing the dynamics, right? That is a happy, happy place. That's the place to be, isn't it? Yeah. That's the place to be on your amp. Yep. Let's see where we get with the Lester on that then. me. 
goodness me. So, what have we got? We've got a mostly cranked AC30. Yeah. We've got a treble booster kicking it. And actually, just off the volume control of the guitar there, we're back to clean, even on a Lester. Yeah. So, it's a really beautiful approach to these sorts of things. So, like Brian May is a really good example. He le leaves his treble booster on all the time. Right. You know, he uses a wireless system. His wireless, his treble booster is actually on the strap of his wireless system yeah. because it's a germanium thing. It's got to see the guitar. Got to see the guitar. Can't see the wireless. Exactly. Um, there are some trouble boosters that are, you know, if uh, some silicon uh, trouble boosters that are, are better, at, you know, with that side of things. But a traditional single transistor germanium trouble booster really wants to see, um, the which guitar. is what the Dallas Range Master exactly was. Right? Exactly, okay. exactly. And we probably should have said at the top, every single treble booster on this board is inspired by that pedal, Indeed. the Dallas Range Master, with a few tweaks. Indeed. Which I guess brings us, just as a point of note. I couldn't handle that, the ghost notes from the Transformer. It's pretty, it's okay. Now here's what's really interesting, right? Yeah, you hear it like that, it's just out of control. You put that in a mix, yeah. and it's like, you hear Sabbath. Glue. You hear, you. Yeah. it really is. It's yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Those, those harmonics. Tony Iommi, we didn't even mention Tony yeah. Iommi. But, you, but that's the thing, you yeah. know, you, it, it's just flipping glorious. So, Black Country Customs IOMI treble booster should be on there. We've got so many, we couldn't get them all on. So honorary mention to, to that one too. Indeed, indeed. Let's have a quick listen to them then, the others. We're not going to go do deep dives on all of them because we'll be here a week. The, the reason we've chosen these is because they each have a couple of extra features yes. that take that very simple um, single germanium transistor range master design and add some stuff to make it a bit more usable. Honorary mentions at this point to the Analog Man Beano Boost. Beano Boost and the Keeley Java Boost, which are probably, outside of these, d definitely mine, my favorite treble boosters because you can change the frequency of that high end, which yep. I find a bit hurtful. The only reason they're not on here is we've used them loads before and we wanted to give, yeah. to, you know, to hear these ones through and, the mix. And they are, quite traditional range master types, aren't yeah. they? So these move on a little bit from those. Uh, yep. Maybe not the Cornish so much. Yeah. Um, where do you want to start then? Let's start, we'll come back to the peasant. So let's start with the union tube and transistor. So we've got a gain control, a level control, but the middle control lets you add some lower mids back in. Because one of the issues with the treble booster is it scoops all away a lot of the bass and the lower mids. The original design was brutal. Yeah. Like, you know, no low mids, no nothing. What's that, like something on the input, presumably? The, ca the capacitor on the input. Yeah. So a lot of these, you can switch that the value of that capacitor, okay. which lets more bottom, more bottom end come through from the guitar. Yeah. All um, right, let's have a listen to this then. So um, Union Tube and Transistor, we love their stuff. Uh, they do a bunch of different versions of this treble booster with different features. This is the snap, and you may be interested to know there is also a crackle and a pop. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. A lot of treble boosters don't have a control for kind of gain and output. It's usually quite often on yeah. one knob. Yeah. That's a brilliant addition. Awesome. The the frequency knob there is very interestingly placed. Right. I thought it might be more low low frequency than that, but right. it's definitely low mids. Mid, low mids. Yeah. Chewy low mids. Yeah. So very nice. It, it 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 means that all throughout the frequency range, it's still a treble booster. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, which is really lovely. Um, okay, Dirty Mac. This is one I've been using for the past 
least year. Actually, no, more than that, COVID. Okay. And I heard this and it was like, it just blew my mind for a couple of reasons. It sounded glorious, but also, and we'll hear this a bit later on, also works into a clean app as well. Okay. Right, so it's really cool. <laughs> So, up from the Cornish in terms of what yeah, it's doing. Yeah, yeah totally. Th there's a, more of a cocktail element to that one. Yep. Which I guess is partly partly what you're doing. You're taking a bit of the frequency spectrum and you're really boosting it. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. I think that sounds tremendous. Like super simple. No LED. No battery input. Uh, just so battery only. No no. Um, but I've always love Steve's work and I just think that sounds glorious. Yeah, interesting isn't it? They're both one both the Cornish and the Dirty Mac, both one knob treble boosters, both based on the same thing ish. But the frequency at which they're doing their vocal bit is quite different. Quite different indeed. And with reference to the aforementioned analog man Bino boost and the Keeley Java boost, the mm -hmm. original Keeley Java boost, that's what that little switch on there does. Yeah. Doesn't it? Let's it just switch between those frequencies. Yeah, yeah, which is for me would be a must-have. Sure. In case that particular frequency didn't tickle you in the uh, happy. Place. Indeed, indeed. All right. Um, what we got next then? So the Uno. This is really interesting. If you hear this on its own, it's hard to hear that it does anything. So you play, and then okay. I put the Uno on. Uh, hello to Reese at Bigfoot, by the way. Yes, indeed. We're not entirely sure this is the most recent version. I had a quick look on Reese's website, and there's versions with more knobs and switches on. So it may not be the most up-to-date version, but check out Reese's stuff at Bigfoot. It's really, really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so check this out and I'll, I'll switch it on. Okay, interesting. It needs a buffer somewhere. It needs a buffer in the front of it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the peasant up as yeah. like a, an always on thing. So just play that for us. It's adding a bit of overdrive. Okay. Can we ahead. add less? Yeah. favorite one so far. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, so what's really cool about it <laughs> is passive. It yeah. requires no power. Um, so it's using a transformer uh, and a filter circuit and it's just really, really clever. Straight passive, but it does require a buffered signal. It has to it. have a buffered signal going into it. And so, in actual fact, for a lot of boards, it, that will work brilliantly. You know, if what you, if you've got the you know, a pedal board that uses a buffer at the input and a buffer at the output, and you think, I can't have a treble booster because I've got a buffer on my board, then that is perfect. Uh, Taylor. Is it the treble booster that works after your wireless then? It is, it is. It's wow, shame, there it's, you go. It's a shame we can't test that. Don't have a wireless to hand. But for those of you who don't know, wireless uh, guitar system, you have a pack on your, well, I like mine, you know, right down, right, right down, down in here. I strap this on. And uh, sorry, spinal tap wireless quote. system. <laughs> uh, and there's a receiver, either at your pedal board or at the amp. And the receiver is 
puts out a buffered signal, basically. Exactly. So that's why it can be problematic to use them before fuzzfi and things like that. However, this requires a buffer before it. Therefore, yep. it may well work with a wireless. Will absolutely work with a wireless. No Bang question. In. There you go. Nice one. Really good. Killer, Reese. This is the next one's the Luxmaster from Reed's Electro. Um, it's super cool. So I had the uh, his original Troll Booster, which was the, the one's got the 108 Master, is it? No. No, it's the rocket ship one. Anyway, it's got the. It's got, it looks like this. The rocket ship is on here. Sorry, Marcus. Dan, Dan and I were moaning this morning about pedals that aren't called treble booster <laughs> and distortion and there, overdrive. There you go. <laughs> and it's a really cool sounding thing. But what I couldn't get on it was the the cleanup. The cleanup. The yeah. way that I like. The Marcus is I did try this, and this is a superb um, treble booster. We've got. Similar to the Union tube and transistor, we've got the range knob here mm -hmm. that controls the amount of frequencies that we're sending to the boost. Um, we've got a bias control for the transistors and the boost amount. We also have a foot, an extra foot switch here that sets, set, sets everything to its maximum amount. We've basically preset that to be more angry. Right. All right. So if you play, and I'll just have a quick... Uh, what do all those switches do? So this switch is between two different transistors. Yeah. And this switch is between... This is a bright switch here. Yeah. Uh, and this also switches between the range... Um, cool. Basically for the, for the preset. So we've got... Uh, if we go to the preset here and I leave these up, it basically sets these to full, the boost and the bias to full. It's really cool. Nice. Um, when you said true transistors, I was imagining imagining two transit vans, like <laughs> some kind of heavenly existence. Right. No, it's well. The thing is, I okay. Love vans. <laughs> These pedals are based around a really super simple design. There might not be a simpler design. And. The transistors that you use make a massive difference. It's, a, it's a, well, the, what, the input capacitor? Yes, input capacitor. Transistor. At, into the transistor, and then you have uh, then you have the, your bias, your um, output capacitor. Digital modeling chip. So all that stuff, <laughs> all the software, Bluetooth. Um, Filtering yeah. power supply. So it's a, it, None of that. It makes a huge difference the sort of transistor that you use. Things like uh, my old uh, the Dallas, uh, that's Dallas Range Master. Um, is it here? No, it's over the other room. So my old Java Boost yeah. Keely, has the Keely. old Keely Java Boost has the, an original Amala um, OC eighty four, I think, um, black bottle transistor. Uh, black bottle, yeah, black bottle transistor in it. This old germanium thing, and it's like. It's extraordinary. And it sounded extraordinary for about a year. <laughs> then it went. Yeah. And Robert sent me over another one and, you know, got a bias at the same. Yeah, perfect. They are temperamental, but they are so crucial to the way they sound. Um, so, yes, this lets you switch between a couple of different transistors. Okay, so I'm really interested in hearing a couple of these into the cleaner amp in a minute. But for the moment, then, let's have a listen to the Lux Master. And I, you should play this as well, Dan. But okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> so it cleans up beautifully, even with hum buckets. <laughs> it's, I just, it's just a stonking thing. It's cool. Play, yeah. play, play. <laughs> Awesome. It's really awesome. Obviously, I've got no idea what any of the controls do. I don't have my glasses on and I can't see either. Uh, it's too far away. So, uh, the default mix settings there are obviously where it sounds best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything up, two o'clock. Very good. Banging. Very um, good. <laughs> no surprise that it, uh, that it sounds pretty good. If you don't know who Marcus is, check out a recent video we did wiring a fuzz space and you'll get an introduction to Marcus there. Yeah. Solid dude. Solid dude. Yeah, uh, beautiful work. Speaking of solid dudes, um, where are we going next then? So let's go up to, uh, this is the new Catlin Bread skewer. I've really liked some of the things I've come up with recently. Yeah. They released two pedals. Uh, one was based around uh, a an input stage in an old tape machine. Yeah. And the other one was the trouble booster that they used to go into it. And this is like a more aggressive version of that trouble booster. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Three controls. Three controls. Um, that are skew, extra, and boost. Right. So skew is going to be the frequency, uh, extra is extra frequency. More is so more. More is more. Go on. Very nice. Particularly like the tunable, uh, the skew control. Yeah. Because uh, let's say you, as we heard with the Dirty Mac, you know, it's key resonant frequency there or whatever you want to call it, the, the, the peak of that treble mm -hmm. boost mm -hmm. is in a very particular place that yeah. may or may not suit your ears or your amp. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, really good point. So you can change that. Yep. Okay, uh, Jam Rooster then. So this is, this is probably the most traditional 
one that we have on the board. Um, this is Custom Shop. It's got a <laughs> a leather. It's the Voyeur series, isn't it's it? It's wearing a leather jacket. Uh, I'll do a close up of it. And in the back, there's a zip, <laughs> which you can zip down to reveal what's inside. <laughs> it's, it's genius. It's so naughty. It's genius. So this has uh, a really traditional uh, Dallas Rangemaster circuit in it, but we have the switch on the side that switches between three different input capacitors. On the top. On the top. Ah, yeah, on the, on the side. side of the knob. I was like, oh, sorry. oh I see. Oh, yeah, right yeah, side yeah, of the knob. Yeah. Um, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Yeah. So you have Shungaj. flipping old school. I do have to try it with the strap though, because if it's a very traditional yeah. range mastery type. Now, I have to say, this is not a sound I've ever really been into, the, uh, the treble booster AC30 strap thing, which of course we'll know from Rory Gallagher. Um, I don't know any Rory stuff, so I'm not going to try and play like him, but who knows? Bridge pickup. Let's see where we get to. Very cool. It's but, it feels great. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. really, really feels great to play because everything is just caving in so much. Yeah. So you've got all this elastic loveliness. And yet the frequencies project. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's so interesting. So many times, if we, if we are for using compressors or anything that's limiting, it sounds great and it feels great, but often it can be a little bit flubby. Whereas yeah. this is just all those frequencies that go. Oh. No, no fear of no. the flubbiness here, no, is there? No. <laughs> so this is the next one's the pedal porn. This is um, better stay on the strap for this then. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Caesar Dallas Diaz Diaz um, Cesar Diaz Cesar. Uh, we, okay. Well, he modded. A, he was famously Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar tech. Yes, and yeah, he's yeah. John Mayer's guitar tech. Is he? Okay, that makes so much sense. 
And he modded an old Range Master for Stevie. Yeah. And this is apparently based on that design. Mm. He did actually put out some pedals. Yes, he did. Yeah, the Texas Square Face. And I'm guessing a version of this. Right. Okay. But, yeah. And similarly, we have that the switch on the right hand side, the, the knob on the right hand side. Yeah. Again, it's a three position switch. So um, I'm assuming it does a similar thing to the capacitor. We'll see. Switch. We'll hear this into the fender amp in a minute. Um, yeah. So I've misunderstood this pedal because I always thought it was an overdrive pedal. I didn't realize it was a treble booster. Okay. Should have read the manual. Nah, maybe they're overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, it's a bit hopeless trying to play Stevie Ray into an AC30 with no reverb. Pretty nice treble booster, though. So yeah, yeah. what do you think of it as a, as a straight treble boost, then? I don't like the pedal. I, I really like the pedal. Those frequencies are harsh. It's the harsh. Yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the stern is but harsh. I love those. I love the attack. Yeah. So it's that thing where the amp is limiting and yeah, you still yeah. get the front of the click of the pick on it. It's flipping glorious. I am starting to feel sorry for the AC30 as well. This poor thing. It's it loves it. It's Transformers going, I'm too old it for this. absolutely loves it. <laughs> All right. Uh, like, Love me. <laughs> Notice me again. Last one then before we, we just, we're not going to hear all of them through the Fender ramp. We're just going to hear some different things you might want to do with yeah, the treble yeah, booster. Yeah. R2R electric. These, this is interesting. This is super interesting. So again, we've got um, switchable uh, input capacitors, but this pedal on the, if you open up the pedal, you'll see on the base plate is listed every single component that's in it, where it's from, its age. It's all, it's all sort of, um, what you say, uh, re... Yeah, so all those people who are buying up old organs and yeah. old bits of jukebox and stuff so, so they can strip out these components that you just can't find anymore. Exactly. I mean, even down to the switches and stuff, it's, yeah. it's extraordinary. Um, the, the detail and the care that's gone into making this yeah. is just flipping. Like, you know, all, like all of them, yes. But I love seeing... You know, this is a 1951, you know, capacitor from taken out of something, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> so basically we've got our level control here and then we've got our different, yeah. um, basically the input capacitors here that give us, instead of just having three different positions, we've got a whole bunch of different ones. Gangi. Gangi.
That's extraordinary. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but actually, uh, sounds great. I just think my ears are probably You're giving done. up at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've, we've made our way through we have. all the troll boosters. Yeah, we wanted to do it loud so that um, you get the full. I mean, obviously, without being in the room, you don't get the full thing, but the amp really does have to be that loud so that the transformer is caving in, the speakers are caving in. Yeah. That's the sound, and that really is... is how it's supposed to be. Indeed, indeed. Um, I don't think I could live with the Transformer wolf notes and everything. That yeah. would not suit me. <laughs> I like it cleaner and clearer and all of that. To wit... To woo. Um, I don't get... I mean, it is just a flipping glorious rock and roll guitar sound, isn't it? It it's, is it's the stuff that, that rock and roll is made of. Yeah, yeah. And it's really fantastic to hear it in its real form. And you can... Because we're so used to guitar sounds in a mix, yeah, you just know what that's going to be like, yeah, you know, and everyone's just going, yeah, you know, come on. <laughs> it's just magic. So let's, well, for the final bit of the video, we'll switch over to the Fender app. We'll just dis discuss a couple of other things that you can do with a treble booster, because yeah. as we said, um, a treble booster into a cleaner amp can be a pretty hateful experience. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to dip our toe into the real world. We're going to give the AC thirty. A well-earned break. <laughs> Bless you. I love being reminded of what a beautiful amp yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is an interesting amp. This is um, it's a custom shop Fender bass breaker from the early 2000s. And what it is is a 59 Bassman reissue, but with two 12 speakers. Right. That's it. And it's a really interesting amp. Pretty clean at low volume, overdrives like a good one when you whack it up. Like a proper good one. We'll do it, we'll do a separate video on it. But um, if you wouldn't mind, Daniel, then let's uh boff. Let's uh let's hear it. Okay. So as you can see here, much, much cleaner than yeah. the Vox, the way we've got it set. Just do me a favor, go onto the bridge pickup and give it a, give it a schwack. Tiny bit of overdrive there, but not huge Just amount. a tiny bit. That, so, what a beautiful sounding amplifier. Yeah, you're, I think you're gonna be hearing a lot more of that on, it's the first time we've used it in a video, so I'm interested to hear what it records like. Yeah. Um, let's hear a standard treble booster then into that. Let's hear the rooster, shall we? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the dB meter said, and I don't know whether it's just because the amp is directly behind me, but that's the loudest sound I have heard today. That was like a shotgun going off. It was. A very focused <laughs> mid-range yeah. shotgun. For those of you who don't aren't around loud guitar sounds very much, that reminds me of the day I walked into a Jay Mascus <laughs> sound check, and there's Jay stood with his with two full Marshall stacks and an orange full stack. And I'm like, oh cool, Jay. <laughs> And it literally hit me in the chest and nearly knocked me over. That wasn't quite that, but that definitely reminded me of that day. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're going to turn it down a little bit, are well, we? No, 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 no. We're going to leave the amp where it is. Okay. Because as a as a core tone to work with... It's nice. It's lovely. It's lovely. But how do we make a troll booster work with that? We have to introduce limiting somewhere. Some gain. So we have to introduce some gain. And we don't have to introduce a lot of gain. Like we had the amp, just the AC30 was on that edge where we dig in, it was lovely. If we just take a really simple, nice sounding overdrive, so the ODR1, for example. Just to make the point, if we turned the 
fender up at this point, it would be doing a lot of the same things that, that the, the AC30, AC30 doing. was doing. Yeah. We don't need to revisit that territory. It'll sound glorious. We're talking about if you do have a cleaner amp that you can't crank. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's throw on some ODL1. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Lovely. Yep. We'll do the same thing. We're going to put the rooster into the ODR1. Super interesting. So what we've lost from the AC30 is all that extra histrionics that the output, well, actually the whole amp is bringing to the game. The yep. transformer ghost notes that we were talking about earlier, a lot of the extra histrionics and all of that. It, you're losing that, uh, but what you're adding in is a bit more control, Yeah, uh, a tighter overall presentation, I would say. Absolutely. And this is... we. <sighs> basically shown two extreme examples yeah right we've had the ac30 like really rocking and we've got this really clean but there is everywhere in between and that's about finding gain structure yeah if, you know if you like the amp on the edge break up and adding a few pedals and stuff awesome there's a way to set the treble booster that will work with that if you want a super clean amp so that you've you know you've got all your delays and reverbs and stuff yeah and then, but you still want to be able to have these sounds. And this is a really great way to do it. The other advantage with this is then you can then start to add, um, there's no reverb in the app, right? No reverb in either of these apps. I was going to say, it's, there's a couple, there's definitely one, at least one thing I'd like to try. Yeah. So that would be one of them is let's add some reverb. I want to just try a couple things and see okay. where we get to. All right. So let's do, let's try this. Let's go. remind ourselves what the amp sounds like. Do I like about that? You can still hear the amp. Totally. You, the amp is still very much doing its thing in all of that. The benefit, so number one, you may well prefer the sound of the cranked AC30 and the treble booster whacking it. It's I mean, a glorious thing. It's the sound of ages. And yeah. If you've got the, the wherewithal to be able to do that, good on you. Most of us that can't crank that amp in that way and are yeah. dealing with a cleaner amp usually. Yeah. So 
what we've done is we've introduced some overdrive. Now you could equally do that if you've got an amp with a master volume and it's got some gain in the front end. The point is you need to add some overdrive after the treble booster before a clean amp. Yeah. Doing it in this way, one of the benefits of doing it in this way is that we can add delay and reverb after the overdrive. Exactly. Whereas in an amp, if you had gain going in the front end of your amp too much, you'd probably then need to move the delay and reverb into the loop. Yep. So, but even then, even then, you're up against it. Yeah. Because we're, it's not just the preamp that's overdriving. It's we're the, overdriving yeah, the output two. section. Yeah, we're yeah, overdriving yeah. the speakers. Yeah. So even if your amp has an effects loop, once you're using your amp like that, you it's but going between the effects loop at the front of the amp basically makes zero difference. Yeah. It's still going to be a mess. Yeah. Okay. You know, depending on how cranked the amp is. But exactly. But yeah. what I'm saying is, if we're using the amp where, where it's cranked, the power stage is um, limiting, the transformer is limiting, the speakers are limiting. Yeah. Then whether it goes, the delay is before the preamp or before the rest of that stuff, it's going to make very little difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I want to try then is let's see if we can get this pedal porn thing happening a little bit into a more fendery type amp. Now I know that with Stevie Ray, we'd be talking about dumbbells and black panel amps. But anyway, um, so what I need is some spring reverb. So much quieter with the strap. Is there a high-end control on there? Yep. So interesting, after playing really loud sounds so far, this seems impossibly quiet and guitar's not doing anything. Wow, okay. So let's get let's get into the nobles then. I suspect we'll probably want to set that down there somewhere. Do you want to try the Anthrax um, 5? Uh, I just stick with the nobles for a second. Okay, yep. Loving the reverb, but anyway, we'll work with it. What we need is everything on two o'clock, Dan. Yeah? Okay. I'm not sure it sounds much like Stevie Ray, but I flipping love the sound. It's awesome. I flipping love that sound. Wow. <laughs> um, with with due respect to the Collider, uh, proper spring reverb in the amp. Yeah. That's what a great sound. I mean, that's I would never consider doing that. No. What a great sound. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a good sound anyway. So. It's one of those things that, you know, when we talk about boosts, we always bring up treble boosters, but I'm really glad we've got to just focus on them like a, as a specifically a pre-gain booster. Yeah. Whether the gain is in your pedal or the amp, you know, going into limiting, it's great. I mean, one, another thing to do is try a treble booster directly into a compressor. You know, um, it's a really interesting, clean tone. Uh, but yeah, I just before we the last thing I want to do, I want I'm going to turn on the um, 385 and set up 
so the ODR one's very neutral sounding. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to set up a, a, an overdrive pedal that's got a bit more character. Okay. And then try a couple of boosts, but I want you to play. All right. Uh, should I do humbuckers? Or is this guitar all right? Um, no, that guitar is fucking amazing. <laughs> all right. I, uh, do you know what? I am. Um, I've, I've done some strata blasting. I'm going to do some humbucking. Okay. All right. For, for all you humbucking people out there. Good man. Not least, I do love this guitar. It's so great. Is it ready? Yep.
That amp is extraordinary. It's truly amazing. Truly amazing. The Vox is really spectacularly beautiful. I personally couldn't deal with all that extra stuff. It's just, but that's the clarity that's the of the sound that. of that. That's oh yeah, yeah, totally. The sound of ages. Totally. But that. Yeah, yeah. That's, to me, there's something matchlessly about that sound. The the clarity, but how harmonically rich it is. Oh, that's the tweed thing. That's the tweed thing. It's pretty extraordinary. Good. All right. Here's another rabbit hole. Okay, <laughs> that felt like a long one. I don't know if it was or not. I think we were having fun. Yeah, that was amazing, <laughs> amazing. Um, so w what are we to say then? Um, if you've if you've been scared of treble boosters or or you've you've tried them and they're just like too trebly, the answer is you need to run it into something with a bit of gain. That might be a pedal or it might be an amp. Yeah, but the harmonic richness you can get from that is really serious. Very serious. And as we've said, and I mean, there's got a lot of gain going on today, but sometimes stacking a couple of lower gain devices can be harmonically and dynamically more interesting place to be than just cranking the gain on your whatever pedal it is. Yeah. And I think that's certainly the takeaway for me today. I would never consider using a treble booster because I've never found one that works with the kind of rig I like. Right. But running it into that overdrive pedal, especially the 385. Yeah. That was really killer. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Please um, leave comments uh, in the comment section below. We'd love to know what you think. Join us on Monday for viewers' comments and questions where we can go through your questions about the video. Uh, and yeah, we'll get onto that. That'll be fun. Um, again, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. Please go there. That's the primary way we fund this show. The packaging's lovely. Indeed it is. <laughs> Even the tape that goes in the box. And the shipping is fast. So uh, please do that. Um, uh, what else? Thatpedalshop.com in the US. If you want to buy pedals, you're in the US. Uh, accessories, and there's even some amps there. Please go to thatpedalshop.com and buy stuff. Indeed. Yeah. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. Indeed, and our very dear friends in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Just want to mention patrons as well. We do a thing called Patreon. Uh, patrons, we are doing a thing where we do podcasts of these episodes plus our VCQ on a Monday for patrons. And we also do regular giveaways uh, if you're a current patron. So check out patreon.com, that pedal show and see what's going on there. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on Monday for VCQ. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.